Hey, yo, YouTube. Uh, before we get into the video, I just really wanted to uh, thank everybody that was a subscriber recently. Um, I appreciate you. Y'all like the uh, deck that I made for the High Evo, and I really want to be able to do more decks like that. So I kind of have like a really weird homebrew that I concocted. So if you like weird ass decks, um, let me know and I'm going to showcase it in my next video. But for right now, I have to continue on with this Eliath, uh, kind of rant, but it's more cohesive this time, but I still stumble and stumble a little bit, but either way, if y'all do like the, the channel and everything like that, please stay tuned. I got some more like brain activity working for a deck and i'll be doing more deck highlights and not so much ranting um but i appreciate the the views and, and the, the new subscribers and all that so thank you from the bottom of my heart i appreciate y'all that is fucking that is garbage bro that is fucking trash dude that is so fucking trash, bro. That's fucking trash, dude. That is fucking trash, dog. I don't care who you are. That's fucking hot garbage right there. What I just did. I'll admit it. I'll fucking admit. That was hot ass. Hey, yo. What's going on, people? All right, my last video, <clears throat> I was pretty angry with uh, with my rant. I try to be like cool as possible, but it, I was I was mainly upset. And I don't want to do like too many rants on the game, but I also feel like we got to be a little bit honest with the game and. We got to have at least some sort of conversation about what's going on. Now, I know a lot of people are like, yo, this card is trash, et cetera, et cetera. Or this card is, is good and they give no reason. They're like, hey, these are, uh, there's counters to this and, and that understandably yes like every seems like every card has a counter where you whether you play cosmo armor shang chi stuff like that they're tech cards right but but hear me out here when the card is in the top three of the meta it's a problem even cards like angela and kitty pride as we see here uh, in deck, you know what I'm saying. Seeing 21 percent of the time has a 56.8 like a 57 percent win percentage. When drawn, 57 percent, 57 percent, 57.5 or 58 if you want to round it up. Wins the average amount of cubes is 0 0.52. When a card like Eliath, this is about Eliath. Right here. It's in the top three. See, America Chavez is number one. It's seen 35% of the time. Has a 57 win percent when it's, play, uh, when it's played. Jeff is a 33%. It's a very, very sought after card. Wins 55% over half of his games. Win drawn, 50, uh, 56% win percentage. Win played, 56 again. Average huge, 0 0.46. This game is less than any of these cards here of both uh America Chavez and Lan and Jeff and Jeff the Shark. This is seen 25% of the time, but has a 54% win uh win rate when in deck. When it's drawn, it's a 55% win percentage. And when it's played is a 64% win 
win rate with 1.17 cubes. That is a problem. Okay? That is a pretty big fucking deal. Now, even then, if you if we scroll down to Hella, if I can because I know she has like a, a, a crazy win percentage when she's when she's played. <clears throat> but you also see Hella right here. Twenty six thousand like games or whatever, I think this is it. Three point five nine percent when it's in deck. When drawn, it's a fifty two point oh. When played, it's like a seventy percent win rate with one point seven three. Sometimes it sucks to try to get hell out, but when hella is out and you got all your shit out of your hand, it's pretty practically a guaranteed win to have hella. But hella is a specific deck, so you can't technically put her into every single type of deck, right? If we look at the decks for, I believe this is, uh, yeah, Eliath. It's been in, hella's been in for, I don't know how long, just from day one, right? I'm not sure about the beta. I played it during uh, the global release. Okay. You have numerous amounts of decks in here. 70% win percentage. With the new card, Elsa and Mobius and Jean Grey. Huh, play 40 games, but 70%, that's... That's still a, a, hef, a heavy amount of games won from this deck alone. I don't even know what this is like. Basically, a lockdown deck. You just you, you basically lock down your your opponent. This deck also won a a pro series. Eliath is in it. Seventy seven hundred eighty four games, sixty three point nine win percentage. This has a 70 win percentage out of 40. This has a 62.8 percentage out of 1,300 games. Over 1,300 games. And this is what I was talking about last time in my very crazy rant. When you can just put this into any type of deck, whether it's a move, a move tempo with Silk and and Spider-Man and all that, you're able to play cheap-ass cards. They're able to get powered up. Done deal. Your Jeff can be played anywhere. Craven basically buffs up. Kitty Pride is constantly getting out of priority. It, it's wild. And then last turn, you can basically play four priority to play your ally. Uh, Vision being in everything now. A Guardians deck. This is the another deck that fifty nine percent win percentage out of two out of damn near twenty five hundred games. It's insane. Seventy two win percentage. These are very high winning percentage for a card that when it's played wins you sixty five percent of the game. Here is a Thanos deck. This is one of the ones that I've been seeing on ladder. This is all in Thanos. You got this. You're able to, with the consistency of America Chavez and Chavez being part of the uh, <clears throat> part of the deck to to basically push out the cards that you need out. Out of 47 games, 68 percent win percentage. Out of 327 games of a Elsa move 68%. 68 point, 69%. Giggity. 1.1 average cubes one. That's a lot of fucking cubes. That's a lot of snapping, bro. Destroyer Wars a Galactus deck. You it's a win. This has a 58% win percentage. The Patriot deck that I, I, I explained earlier. This is 609 games. 
that this plate has over a 65% win percentage. The other Elsa, <clears throat> Elsa and Jean Grey deck. This is out of 18 games, 72 win percentage. This is pretty crazy. It's nuts how many games that are played and none of them dipped below 50%. These are very, very high win percentage decks. High Evo and a lot and in Eliot. Lockdown. You can put it in and here we go. 62% win percentage, Shuri and Sauron. It's already a strong deck. This is the deck that I've used since whenever uh Sauron came out and like the, I forgot when he came out, but at the time I spent six thousand credits on the card, and I was just all like, "Yo, this this card is crazy. This is like the pre Shuri shit." So this was like broke Shuri shit, and I used my tokens to get Sauron, and not a lot of people were on that on that wave. And this been my highest deck that I used to get me my highest uh, winnings, but I always try to do other decks and stuff, but. You know, people tell you that you need to use certain cards or certain decks or whatever, or the deck that you're more comfortable with. I've always been really comfortable with uh, Shuri and Sauron, even with the, the nerf that Shuri got. So I've been relatively decent with that deck. I know that deck. I know when to, like, the snap sometimes, because I, I don't know anymore because of all the the, the, the Shadow Kings and, and everything and Shang Chi's kind of popping up out of nowhere, trying to psych out more <clears throat> of my opponent whenever I had She Hulk in my deck. So I try to, you know, wait my, you know, hold up on, until turn six that they play that that Shang Chi out there and they couldn't hit it. So I'll do the whole Taskmaster, uh, you know, late, or She Hulk and Taskmaster. I'm like stumbling over words. I'm sorry, y'all. Um, it's just. I'm trying to be less upset, okay? My thing is, like I've always said about overpowered cards, when Zabu came out, I know a lot of people don't know what pre-nerf Zabu was. When Zabu came out, wasn't that card overpowered? Your four costing cards cost two now. And it was really, really good with Spider-Man, where you're able to Spider-Man and Exorbitant Man on your last turn or uh, on turn five and shut down both lanes where a player couldn't play anything. That was a huge problem when before when Spider-Man was able to lock down a, like a lane completely because they played it on turn five. And now imagine if Spider-Man had the same ability and was able to play with Eliot. We would be seeing that a lot more. But even then, I digress. That's that's a that's a what if that's like that's a. A, an alternative timeline, bro. That's a that's a flashpoint flash move, bro. At, at, we could have been having that with the release of the with this card. If that it would have had Spider Man and Absorbing Man on top of a light. Oh God! It's in every deck, damn near. Electro Ramp, Zola, Electro. You can beef it out real quick. Jeff is just there. You know, it's. It's too many styles of decks and archetypes that it can be placed in. That is kind of a problem that I have with the with the card. Any other deck that's been in since fucking Pool 1, right? Cosmo, uh, Shang-Chi's a Pool 1 card. Oh, it says Series 2. I feel like I got it way earlier than that. These are seen 19, they're in the deck 19% of the time. With a decent uh, cube rate. You know, Collector jumped up. Ha ha seen a, a really big jump with, with Loki. And they're both right next to each other. Nebula has seen a really big increase. But even then, with Nebula being out, it's not even nearly where it is with Eliot. Eliot having a 1.17 average cube rate. With it just being in the deck 
and then America Chavez thinning out your deck so you can basically get Eliath in your hand. It's kind of a problem, dude. That's all I'm saying. It's me getting hit with it. It's it sucks. It, it, it really fucking sucks. But you can't get good if the card can be placed into any archetype where it could be put in with Cerebro, Lockdown, Thanos, uh, Elza, and whatever, Junk Eliath has a 53% win percentage. Junk is a pretty decent archetype, personally. Even on top with Elsa. This probably would win more if it had Elsa blessed him, but this says the 30th, of, so that, that the date's a little bit off, but... These were cards that were in the in the tournament. Lambie Gala, whatever this is, can be basically put into anything. You get Electro, you may or may not get Electro, but you still play Iron Lad and you can still get any of these cards from your from your deck. When it's a combination, when when the car can make just makes any deck good, that's like a problem. Control uh, Eliath fifty seven percent, dude. Like, come on, man. These are insanely high win percentage decks that gets that the average is sixty five percent win when it when it comes out. But it can be placed in anything. You don't have Cosmo. You're trying to wait for Cosmo. You don't have Cosmo because you might have gotten it turn five. Or maybe it just pops up turn six. You never know. Like, yes, there are cards that stop. That stop certain cards and stuff. Sometimes it might help the other person. But sometimes you may not get that card. And that can, like, fuck you over. They might have something better than what you have. And you just don't have the right amount of cards to beat it. Or you could, they can just retreat. You know what I'm saying? It's no big deal because they probably won more games with it than you tried to build a deck. If you got to build a deck specifically for a fucking card, that's a problem. Because whatever you try to do to counter it, they probably thought about something to... Get around that shit. 64%, 65, 64, round up. 65% win percentage. When it's played. When played. When drawn. It's over, it's over half. You, you won half of your games when it's drawn. Even when seen, it's still a 25% win percentage. And the other two cards that are on top are not that busted. It's not busted. Jeff is a really great card to use. It's a really, really great card. It's lovable and shit. Everybody loves it. Eliath is a problem. When it's top three and anything. Archetype. When it's put in the to, to Patriot, 62% win percentage. Like, we gotta be, we have to be fucking real, respectively. We gotta be fucking real. Yeah, I came through, like, on a place of just, like, upset because I play Sauron and stuff, but I have, I have Red School, Red School, Shuri, and then Sauron in my hand, right? And then I might get, I might draw zero. And then I might draw uh, Shuri. Now, if I play Sauron, I know that my Luke Cage, if I have it in there, or um, Sauron can be played. Now, my, my, my Luke Cage will get zapped. 
and my armor may get zapped if I don't have the cards in my hand. I would to consistently get some of the big boy cards, or I get, you know, Vision, Rescal, Shuri, and then maybe Ebony Maw. There's times where I haven't even drawn Ebony Maw out of, in, in my deck. Like, my one-costing cards don't show up. So I can't... I can't set up my stuff to get priority to keep my stuff and to be able to drop my armor or anything like that. That becomes a problem, dog. Like I said, it's upsetting. The... The climb in this beta currently is a little upsetting. But it's understandable when this card is being played at a really, really high rate. And when it's played, it has a really, really high win percentage. All because you're able to do whatever. Because it fits into every archetype, damn near. At least when Mobius like came out, it stopped Wave. It stopped She-Hulk. Like, you try to play she not. it was... Good luck. <laughs> good luck trying to play it and, and get your cards out. It was, it, was, it was kind of a problem. So, you may not always get your, your cards. You may not always get the, your... To be able to stop it. Sometimes your Cosmo will pop up at, at the last turn. And at, by that point, what's the point of even trying to get your Cosmo out on a turn six if you don't have priority? If they already got their shit cooking, you're practically screwed. And that's what we can tell about the deck, the the impulse deck that won. Or the... Look at all these decks. I mean, granted, I, I clicked on El Eliath. So they're going to show all the allied stuff, but Thanos, Spider Bones move, and Crossbones became super popular. Uh, Claw and Elias, so ways to basically get the posi your, your positions. Cosmo in one lane. Every they're not Elias are running Cosmo too. They're running, they're able to get Professor Rex, they're able to get Psylocke out, Jeff being played, Claw, making sure that you have priority in multiple lanes, you can Professor Rex like a turn early, or Blue Marvel, or you play fucking Iron Lad, be able to play Iron Lad turn three, you can get lucky and get a, a Professor Rex. It shuts down a lot of stuff, man, and then, or it can Iron Lad... You played in the Iron Lad lane or whatever. Because you didn't know, boom, that pops up. Alith is the is the card that it copies. Whatever you played in that lane, gone. It could have been a Cosmo. Or it could have been armor. That you try to drop in time. Like, alright, hey, it's turn four. I'm going to play Luke Cage in this. And armor. Or I'm going to play fucking... Uh, Misty Knight and an armor or something. And... Whoop, Oh, you try to play your Patriot. Zoop, zapped. Or it could be vision. And now you're now you're in position to move around your card. Because whatever Elioth hits, hits perfectly. It's kind of a problem. It's a pretty big problem when it can be just set into any type of archetype. And that's my deal. You can't you can't necessarily adapt to that when you think you're playing a specific type of like deck now you don't know so how can you ex how can you adapt to something that you don't know because it's disguised into every into every archetype when it can fit into any archetype and it has a very fucking high win percentage when it's played that is a problem There's no amount of get good that can prepare you for that type of shit. Well, why don't you just leech? What if you don't fucking draw the stupid card? That's all I'm saying. At times, it's, a, it's based on RNG. You may not get it. You, you may get it. You may not get it. 
But majority of the time, for me, it feels like District X just like fucks me over. Or Triskelion won't let me draw the cards that I really need to, to get in. But they may have it in their hand already. It's My luck is just not good in this game. There's times where I do really good plays, but I, I don't snap because I'm afraid of Eliath. And even then, if I, even if I have priority, the game want more priority, they happen to have that and it shuts down my shit. I had a, a turn six where an Eliath took out my, like I, I stated before, it took out my Cerebro and my Ravona. Whoop, just womp gone. Thought I had it. Nope. Now my... Now all I got is a bunch of threes on board. Like 10 power where they could just play whatever big card and another card to, to win a lane. You know what I'm saying? And now I got to like be able to spread the power out. Like it's it's insane. It's it's kind of insane. And congratulations if you have it and, and you played it and, and it's one you shit and it's got you to infinite. Like super fucking awesomely cool. But when it's 65% near, like, oh, well over half of the game, that's when it's bullshit. That's all I'm saying. Peace.